The Temple Owls of the American Athletic Conference are thawing out the Reynolds Center in Tulsa with their hot start in the American Conference tied with Connecticut, and they've won eight in a row thanks to the three-point shooting of Aaliyah Butts. For the University of Tulsa, they try to protect home court here at the Reynolds Center as they take on one of the conference's best. They'll need to play as a team next on the American Digital Network. Welcome to the Reynolds Center on the campus of the University of Tulsa. We get set for American Athletic Conference women's basketball. It's Temple 12-3 on the year and on top of the conference with UConn against Tulsa. 5-11, 1-2 in conference play. Hello again, Don King along with the coach, Angela Beck. Nice to have you with us. Coach, when you look at this, certainly the story today is UConn going for 91 straight. But we've got another hot team in the league right now with Temple. Don, we do. Temple has two all-conference players in Butts and Fitzgerald. They have two players that are capable of getting double-doubles any night. They have a stifling defense and one of the hottest coaches yeah. in the country. Yeah, no kidding. They're looking for their ninth straight win today. Meanwhile, for Tulsa, it's still a work in progress as we take a look to the keys to the game. Well, they need to get back in defensive transition as they want to run and uh, put as many points on the board as they can. They need to protect the paint. They've been letting people dribble penetrate too much. Mm -hmm. And then they have to shoot the ball. They have to shoot the three ball effectively in order to win this game. So it's Temple, again, looking for their ninth win of the row. And one of the reasons why is Fionda Fitzgerald. Well, Fitzgerald is a special player. She, she runs the show. She's one of these top assist leaders in the American. She can shoot from three. She can shoot from two. She wants to go to the WNBA, and this kid's got a total package. Character to go along with it, too. Meanwhile, for Tulsa, their leading scorer on the year is Erica Wakefield. Well, Wakefield's done it all for Tulsa for many years. She's very difficult to guard. She can shoot the three. She also is a facilitator for Tulsa. As they go, she goes. So Tulsa will try to bury some threes against this Temple team and see if they can pull off the upset next on the American Digital Network. What makes a temple owl? Meet Stella. She's wise, fierce, and she's not alone. Temple University, where owls call home. We are the cherry and white. The city is our classroom, and we lead the rush hour, making our mark on every field around the world. A world without temple, well, that's like the sky without the North Star. Temple, never stopping. University of Tulsa, a top 50 private institute. Here's the starting lineup for the Owls, who are again are 3-0 oh in the conference along with Connecticut. Aaliyah Butts, a great three-point shooter. Fionda Fitzgerald, we saw her in the open. Ruth Sherrell, Danasia Fountain, and Sophia Martin. As uh, you said, Angela, those three at the bottom could do a double-double at any time. Absolutely. And for Tulsa, Kendrian Elliott will be a big key for Tulsa on the rebounding end and then you have Wakefield and Golden. Ashley Hughes provided some spark off the bench and so she starts tonight for this afternoon along with Lisa Spurl. There is a look at the Tulsa group and their head coach Matilda Mossman in her sixth season. Well, Matilda's been a, a lot of different places, but I think she's feeling really comfortable here building her team from the ground up and doing a great job. And on the other side for Temple, their head coach, Tanya Cordoza, in her ninth year. Well, there's a lot of time we're going to be talking about this coach. As we said in the opening, one of the hottest coaches in the country. But she has a good handle on her kids. Uh, she has four returning starters. And I think she likes, if she can go big, she can go little. There's a lot of great things that can happen. Yeah, they, uh, that's a good point. Here's the tip, and it's controlled by Temple. Here's Fitzgerald. And the long range shot, no good. And Elliott couldn't control it, so Temple will get a fresh clock. 
The shot by Fountain outside. Fountain with it again. Both teams are going to run a lot of different sets. And that one right there was for Fitzgerald, one of the top players in the American. So she puts Temple on the board first. And a steal by Fountain off to Butts. Over Wakefield. It's one of the shots Butts like to take. She likes to take a little pull-up jumper. I think she could have probably stuttered and took her to taken her to the hole, right. but um, you know, she usually makes that. Three seconds on Tulsa, so a turnover on the Golden Hurricane. You were at uh, both shoot-arounds before this game. In fact, you've gotten already six hours of preparation <laughs> here. You got here early with the chickens. What was your sense of preparation for these two teams going into this, coming into this game? Well, I felt something a little different. You know, I, I, I think the Temple lost a, a couple games in the American that, that didn't allow them to go to the NCAAs. I felt their preparation was very workmanlike today. And then if you look at Tulsa, they had about two or three little team meetings uh, on the court, like uh, just with the players. And I, I think that they know that this is special too. So look for this to be a very intense matchup. Tulsa really hoping to win here at home. They're 3-3 three and three at home, and the conference itself has done extremely well this year in non-conference games and protecting home court posi uh, position. Well, here's a little, little spin uh, touch shot by um, Fountain. Martin. Or Mount Martin. One of the adjustments Matilda's done is to try to call more sets for this young team. They were running a motion earlier in the year, and now they're running more sets where she can control who actually gets the shot. Sherelle's open from 14 feet. Last touched by Martin. Well, Hughes was player of the game last time we were here, and, and I, there was a good example of why I like that kid. She she was boxing out the six foot three post player, and it, it went off the tip of her hand. So she does the little things that most fans probably don't notice. Would agree. Tulsa averaging forty percent from the field, which isn't too bad, and a travel called on Hughes. 65 and a half points per game. Meanwhile, Temple 73 and a half points per game. That time uh, Hughes faked herself out, just blew her shoe right <laughs> off her foot. So uh, She blew a tire. I saw her uh, out here probably an hour before most players working on the shooting gun and, uh, you know, really focusing on that mid-range jumper of hers. Temple's very good on the road. They've won five of seven on the road. 12-3 and three overall, 3-0 three and oh in the conference along with Connecticut. And that 12-footer won't go, and Elliott clears it for Tulsa. Tulsa looking for their first points, 2.15 into the game. Well, one of the things Tulsa needs to do is dribble penetrate against this Temple defense. They've got to get to the free throw line, and they've got to attack them because they're playing pressure man. And if they don't attack them, then they're going to stay right on them all game. Nice play by Wakefield, and she found Spurl on the baseline, and Tulsa's on the board. That's a good early look for Spurl. She needs to get involved in the offense. She certainly did on New Year's Day at Houston, but rather silent in the last two games. Here's Tulsa with a chance to tie or take the lead. Wakefield out front. Now in trouble. Spurl takes it against Sherelle. And out of bounds, Tulsa ball. That was good defensive post positioning by Martin, or by Fountain getting that uh, toss back in. And she really, she really went in there and get, got after it. Shane Coffey to Matilda's left. Tanea Atkinson, number 22, in the game for Temple. In place of Fountain. Shot clock winding down. So that's their third turnover here in the early going. Yeah, that was Golden uh, on the shot. Just didn't really get her offer enough and uh, had to force up a shot. As you see on the score bug, you can follow us on Twitter at American underscore women's basketball or WBB. 
Coach Cardoza in her ninth year, the winningest coach in Temple history. And there's a turnover on the Owls. She was at Connecticut for a long time as an assistant. In fact, uh, 14 seasons as an assistant, eight Final Fours, five national championships. And she was quite a player in her day. So you add that to being with UConn for that many runs, you have to have the ability to make a great program as a head coach. Tulsa getting some second chance opportunities. Look out. You can't take anything for granted against Temple. Fitzgerald almost made him pay. Wakefield is picking up a lot of loose balls and Spurl had a good shot, couldn't finish. Well, those are the kind of shots that Coach Mossman needs them to make. Mm -hmm. Those are little three-foot cribs that has really cost them in a lot of games. Seven out of 11 games that they were tight late. They, um, this is a great charge here by Spurl. I don't think that Temple liked that, but that's a good call outside the arc. But Matilda needs them to just have confidence, and they work on shooting a lot, but just being young, they're, they're missing a few shots here that they need to make in order to win. Good pass into Elliott. Misses the cripple and chased down by Temple, but there again is Spurl. Off to Golden. Golden has missed a couple from that spot and can't hit that one. It's off to a tough start. Fountain fouled by Elliott. She'll go to the line. That's one of the advantages that you would think this Temple team has is getting to the free throw line today. Well, they've had the advantage all year because they have the kind of players that like to drive and create havoc. And here, you know, they got the shoulder down, but then, um, you know, they, they impeded her shot. But Temple's the type of team that's going to attack, attack, attack. They're going to attack on defense and offense, and that's why they're one of the top teams right now in the American Conference. Denisha Fountain at the line out of Roxbury, Massachusetts, six-foot guard, junior. As you see there on the uh, screen, averaging nearly 12 points a game, fourth leading scorer, second leading rebounder on the team. She had 14 points and seven rebounds against East Carolina in their last win. And that's huge. You add that with the two all-conference players. Um, that's quite a <laughs> yeah. that's a, quite a combination. Good work by Hughes inside Elliott. Spurl loose for the fourth footer and air, air mailed it. Temple with the lead, six to two. Well, Elliot has to take that shot. Um, I, I'm used to seeing her take that shot, and she just has to make a move. She can't pass that back out after they work so hard to get it in. There's Fitzgerald showing you why she's one of the better players in the league. Well, I had a talk with her earlier today, and I talked about her 19 points. That's quite a few points, and then to be leading the American in assists when you have you know, Kia Nurse at, at, at Connecticut, she, right. you know, she's leading it. So she said she all she wants her team to do is win, and, and she wants to get to the NCAA. So the scoring, she does what she has to do, but she doesn't really focus on it. Ah, uh, long two from Sherelle, showing her range, and it's a 10-2 start for Temple. Well, anytime they can get Sherelle to pull a trigger like that, Boy. they're excited because she's not really putting that many points on the board for them, and uh, she's a big rebounder, though. And Golden draws the foul. And we'll shoot two when we return. We'll come back and talk about this Temple team. 3-0 in the conference with UConn on the American Digital Network. makes a temple owl meet stella she's wise fierce and she's not alone temple university where owls call home we are the cherry and white the city is our classroom and we lead the rush hour making our mark on every field around the world a world without temple well that's like the sky without the north star temple never stopping
University of Tulsa, a top 50 private institution. We are American. The conference of opportunity. The opportunity to chase dreams. The opportunity to make your mark and change the game. Because that's power. We are power. Look at the American women's basketball standings. You see Connecticut at 3-0, as is Temple. Connecticut going for their record-breaking 91st win this afternoon at SMU. And then USF and Cincinnati, along with Tulane in the top half. Meanwhile, Connecticut comes here to play Tulsa Tuesday night at 7 o'clock Central Time. For Matilda, her team getting some good looks, Angela, but just unable to put anything in the hole. Well, it's not the start that they'd hoped for. Two to ten, going one for ten from the field. They really have got to, they're having quality shots, so I can't say they have to get quality shots because they have some quality shots. They just have to make them. And then, you know, conversely on the other end, you know, they've got to make something happen defensively. They don't want to dig a hole here, and I feel like these next uh, five minutes might you know, tell a big story for us. Do they have the confidence to come back and, and really attack that defense? And, and they're shooting around them. They're, they're dribbling side to side. They're, they're afraid to attack. Right. And until they start really putting it down and going north and south, it's going to be tough. We saw them here 10 days ago on the American Digital Network beat Memphis. Then they went to South Florida last week, who has been a nationally ranked team most of the year. They lost that game by 18, but some in the program felt it was one of their better games of the year. Yeah, I mean, it's tough when you lose on the road and, you know, you feel like it's one of the best games that you've had in the year, but I mean, with the young team, South, South Florida is number two in the conference and ranked in the top 20, so it's a tough place to play, and they're a, they're a formidable opponent. Golden hits uh, the second of the two, so she stops the 6-0 run and makes it 10-3. Temple needs to not be complacent now. They're, they're trying to prove that they're an NCAA team. They can't look at a, a game like this and, and be complacent at all. They have to attack, keep the score high, get quality shots just like Fitzgerald just did. She can do that anytime she wants. I mean, she's taking them off the dribble, elevating over them, and getting a quality shot. 12-3, favor of the Owls. Yeah, they've won 20 games each of the last two seasons and unable to get into the NCAA tournament. They've been really disappointed in that. Nice drive to the basket. As you were mentioning, they need to do that. And the freshman off the bench, Shook Dixon, does just that. Well, they have them kind of playing hot potato. You know, they're going oh, pass it here, pass it here. I mean, they're just, just getting rid of the ball. And that time <laughs> she did take it north and south and went right to the goal. And that was a smart play by the freshman. Fitzgerald again. Ah, what a strong move. And one. I mean, that was a big time right. move by her. She is their leading scorer at 19 a game. Fourth in the conference behind three UConn players. Steal by Fountain. Atkinson off to Fitzgerald again and then out to Butts, who's not gotten going yet. You know, the thing about Butts, though, is she never saw a shot she didn't like, and you don't <laughs> see her shaking her head when she bricks it like that either. She's going to take the next one. Addison. That's what shooters do. Exactly. Addison Richards, number four in the game for Tulsa out of nearby Bigsby. So the Owls have it and a, an advantage of nine points here under two minutes to play in the opening quarter. Atkinson unable to hang on to it, but Butts fires again. Just like I said, just if you leave her <laughs> open, she's going to fire it up, and that's why she's one of the best three-point shooters in the league. Uh, Elliott's done a nice job, though, boxing out and getting some rebounds. And she's had some good shots like that, and that's the first one to go for. Well, to say they need her is, is an understatement. They need her to be big, strong, and 
wanting the ball double digit times. She had one of her better games last Saturday at USF. 14 points, five rebounds. We'll see if she can continue on that run again today. Well, she's a freshman, and they sent, they tend to hit a wall after X amount of games, and Matilda made a, the impression that she's kind of hit a little bit of a wall. She's had to fight her way through it, and uh, I think the conditioning and the amount of games that they have at this level, a lot of freshmen aren't ready for that. Right. But she puts a lot of pressure on herself, and she expects a lot out of herself, so that's good that she wants to do more for the team. Fitzgerald up top, and Elliott with another Karam. Much like Fitzgerald will might experience next year in the WNBA or when she goes to the WNBA um, because they hit a wall sometimes your rookie season because you play so many more games at the professional level. Wakefield proved on that last play why she's one of the top players in the country. She she did a little stutter, hesitation, and go. She attacked the glass and knew that they needed to score some points. And this is a better last couple minutes mm -hmm. of this quarter, which is what they needed. Wakefield very good at the line, nearly 80% this season. So they pulled within nine, or excuse me, within five after being down by nine. And a turnover on Temple. Down to the final half minute here, the opening quarter. Big possession here for the Hurricane. Matilda's asking for one shot. Look for Wakefield probably to hold it for a while and look for a high post pick of some sort. They like to run the high post pick on the ball. They looked outside for Dixon. And they'll have four and a half seconds remaining here in the opening quarter. Plenty of time, 4.5. Dixon step back three. Off the mark. So the Golden Hurricane look like they might be blown out down 10 to 2, but after the timeout, they've come back to make it an interesting first quarter. Trailing Temple 14 to 9 on the American Digital Network. We are American. We are the spark that ignites, dazzling, brilliant, intense. We are plugged in with the volume turned up all the way. Because on this court, on any given night, the energy of five becomes the power of one. That's power. We are power. What makes a temple owl? Meet Stella. She's wise, fierce, and she's not alone. Temple University, where owls call home. We are the cherry and white. The city is our classroom, and we lead the rush hour, making our mark on every field around the world. A world without Temple, well, that's like the sky without the North Star. Temple, never stopping. of Tulsa, a top 50 private institution. The American Athletic Conference Championship is right around the corner, taking place March 9th through the 12th at the Excel Center in Hartford, Connecticut, as all 11 American teams will compete for the automatic bid to the NCAA tournament. Tickets are priced as low as $199. Get yours today online by visiting www.excelcenter.com in person at the Excel Center box office or by telephone at 877-522-8499. We look forward to seeing you in March.
Welcome back to the Reynolds Center. Don King along with Angela Beck. And the Temple Owls leading here going into the second period, 14 to 9. Well, the, here's some clips on Fitzgerald. Why is she four for five? She's getting to the rim. She's attacking the defense. She's rising to the occasion and finishing at the rim. That's what good players, great players, special players do. And that's why she is going to be a draft choice for the WNBA. Look for this kid to be drafted. She, she's just, she's a consummate player. And like I said, she's special. In this conference, Katia Lakska, Katie Lou Samuelson, and Nafisa Collier are the top three scorers in the conference, all from Connecticut. Fitzgerald is right behind them at fourth in the conference. And as you mentioned, she has some national acclaim being the national player of the week. And here she comes against Wakefield. And the leader in assists, so, you know, she's just nonchalantly putting up 19 points a, board, <laughs> a game. She's not focused on every time she catches it to shoot it. She's a team player. She's running the offense. She's playing great defense, and uh, she's finishing at the rim. I think, you know, probably in that timeout, Coach said, hey, we need to get some more quality shots. I thought in the last couple minutes of that quarter, Temple kind of settled, mm -hmm. got a little tired, took some bad shots, and, and played a little sloppy, and I, I'm sure that you know, Tanya's told them, hey, we, we need to get better shots, and they did the first couple. Elliott had a shot but put the ball on the floor, and that cost her. She gets it again. That time she goes straight up and draws the foul. Interesting, in the first quarter, Elliott had five rebounds. Tulsa had four offensive rebounds, and that's one of Temple's strengths, and yet... The last time down, they were able to get their first offensive rebound and turn it into second chance points. And now here's Elliott at the line. Temple's doing a good job of doubling up every time Elliott gets it. And so even though they called the foul that time, I thought that was kind of a questionable call because both players were bellied up. But, but you know, she's having to really work for every shot she gets, and that's what Temple makes you do. They make you work for everything. She makes it 16 to 10, and we have number two, Tatiana Perez, in the game for Wakefield. Fountain is in the game, and Atkinson made the last bucket, not this time. Atkinson is an exciting player. She's another double-double for him. She had 19 points, 10 rebounds last week in their two wins. She, you know, she is just another special player, and she's only a sophomore. Foul on 21, Khadijah Berger. Her first, she just ended the game. There's Elliott taking a seat in place for number 33, Crystal Polk. Catch and shoot, and Dixon knocks it down. Dixon's coming out and giving him some good offensive firepower, so I'd like to see her stay in a little longer because she feels it and she's not afraid to take it. Right now, I think Temple's gone to a bigger lineup. They've gone to a double low post, which gives them a little look. She likes to go with a small lineup and a big lineup. This is their big lineup, so expect them to be crashing boards and uh, pounding it inside. That seems to be something overlooked, Coach, is how teams can interchange. You can go big, small, quick. More oh. powerful, and Temple seems like they have the ingredients to do that. Or shoot the three just like Fountain <laughs> yeah. did. I said they're going to pound it inside, and she stroked it from three. But that's great. I mean, she's showing her versatility there. Seven points for Fountain here in the early going after that three. And here comes Temple again, up 19-12. That was the first three of the game, and that one won't go. Golden cleans it up for Tulsa. Well, Richards did a good job of blocking out, but on the other end, she's not facing up. you got to face up and see what's there. That's a little bit of a quick shot for them. They need to move the ball and get a better shot because they're one and done. Fitzgerald challenged by Golden. Fountain can't get it, and it's off Pote's hand, so another opportunity here for Temple. Everybody's rushing it just a little bit. Richards gets it for Tulsa. Off to Golden, who will bring it down. They brought some size of their own in in Polk. Tulsa did to try to keep them out of the paint. She won't score too much for them, but look for her to set some good screens. 
Galden with four on the shot clock in trouble. Off to Dixon again. And again, a quick shot. Quick release anyway. Well, that's an interesting matchup, Golden and Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald has not given her anything, and Golden is having to match up with one of the top guards in the in the in the country, and she's doing a pretty good job. But it's, it's a tough matchup for a freshman. Perez hits Richards, Dick and Dixon out front. Tulsa down seven. As you said, Polk who throws it back to Gildon is not a threat offensively. But she made one like that last week, and she makes another one here today. And a timeout, Temple. How about that? That was a quick turnaround little that jumper wasn't bad. that I didn't expect out I of know her. It. So, that, you know, they're, they're lacking another forward post shooting, and that's really what they need. So here she gets it and just. See, they backed off of turn, her. Little lefty. Nice follow through by the big girl. Yes. We'll come back with more second quarter action from Tulsa on the American Digital Network. What makes a temple owl? Meet Stella. She's wise, fierce, and she's not alone. Temple University, where owls call home. We are the cherry and white. The city is our classroom, and we lead the rush hour, making our mark on every field around the world. A world without temple, well, that's like the sky without the North Star. Temple, never stopping. of Tulsa, a top 50 private institution. We are American. The conference of opportunity. The opportunity to chase dreams. The opportunity to make your mark and change the game. Because that's power. We are power. American Athletic Conference Women's Basketball Championship tickets are now on sale for March 3rd through the 7th at Mohegan Sun Arena. Get your tickets today to watch all 11 teams in action fighting for an automatic berth to the NCAA tournament. Tickets start as low as $99 and can be purchased online at mohegansun.com, on Ticketmaster, or by calling 1-800-743-3000. Let the games begin. We'll see you in March. Tulsa fans serenading the fans here at the Reynolds Center with Temple leading 19 to 14. Outside, temperature hovering around the freezing mark at 32. We've had rain for the last 12 hours or so, so it's kind of on the borderline between rain and freezing rain. And uh, the shooting percentages kind of match what's going on outside. Well, Don, they do. 36% uh, right now for Temple and 25% for Tulsa. From three-point range, it's even colder. We're pretty frigid. It's one for seven <laughs> for Temple and 0 for five right now for the three-point shooting Tulsa Hurricanes. Hurricane applying some pressure in the backcourt. Spurl with that big wing wingspan almost forced to turn over and Butts comes away with it. Well, one thing Matilda talked about in the pregame was that Temple doesn't really go that deep. They only go about seven deep, so she thinks she has an advantage. If she runs a lot of players in here early, that they may get tired, and she may be able to, you know, steal this win. And um, so you'll see right now that she has put a lot of kids in the game, and they pretty much stayed with their top seven. Mm -hmm. Tanya Cardoza, the head coach at Temple. In her ninth year, just past Don Staley. How about that for the winningest coach in our history? Well, they're great friends and former teammates, and I'm sure they're both pleased with each other. They're, again, just the scrappiness, kind of the East Coast mentality of the Temple defense. They're going to get up and get in your face, and they're 
constantly poking at the ball and their defense creates everything so I think coach must have talked a little bit about hey wake up kids because they're back in this game and uh, certainly transition was one of your big keys and Butch just got her first basket at the other end in transition and give Temple a seven point advantage well, there she goes, and she just, you know, pats the ball out, passes it ahead, and Butts scores it out. So good transition and good, good heads-up play. And a foul called on Polk on a reach-in after shooting a mid-range jumper. Well, every possession counts. Right. That was not the possession Matilda drew up. She doesn't want Polk shooting the 13, 14-footer. Uh, she wants her in there banging, rebounding. If she can get a couple points here and there, great, but not with what she wants. Number 12, Shook Dixon back into the game, replacing Richards. So here comes Temple up by seven. They led by as many as nine in the opening quarter. And Fitzgerald, a big reason why. Nice tap away by Wakefield. Fitzgerald, as you mentioned, is very good, not only scoring fourth in the league, but she's one of the best in assist in the country at seven and a half helpers per game. She's always facilitating, distributing, always has her head up. She's a very calm and cool customer. Nice work. Nice job working the ball around to get it in on the weak side. That's what they want to do right there. Pound it in to Pope. She's got their last two baskets. So we're midway through the second quarter here from Tulsa. Tulsa's interior defense has been pretty impressive. They've really blocked out. They've limited their offensive opportunities, and this is one of the best offensive uh, offensive rebounding teams yes. Tulsa is. I mean, Tem Temple is, and they've really done a good job against them. What an athletic basket that was by the freshman out of St. Louis, Shug Dixon. Wow, that was acrobatic. She's got six points to match her season average. She might be working her way in that starting line. Rally. Butts has that one basket. Again, one of the better three-point shooters in the conference, the best in Temple history, and the Owls turn it over. The Owls look a little frustrated. I, here she goes, a little, little toss-up. I mean, I don't even know how to, to <laughs> explain that, that hook kind of lateral hook shot. But it went in. That's what I what I know, and, and she scored it. She has a lot of confidence for she a does. freshman. They set a screen for Spurl. She drives in, draws the foul, and the basket. Here's the replay. I love that play. That is a heart. That I mean, I love the emotion. That's what Tulsa needs in order to get a W here this afternoon is players like that attacking the Temple defense, really making them work on defense. They want to kind of coast on that end a little bit and then make their offense happen, and they're not letting them out right now. She couldn't complete the three-point play, but she's pulled the Hurricane to within one of the Temple Owls with just under three minutes to play. First half. Butts is quick and feeds it inside, and the basket good for Mo Bolden. Butts is a distributor of her own, so she really has two of them, and that was the best that I've seen her distribute. Polk feeling it. Polk is actually experience. causing yeah. some havoc. They don't. They can't drive that lane on this side with Polk in there. I, I don't know if she knows how how much she's you know causing havoc for them. Another shot by Dixon, the circus variety, and it's 23-22. Yeah. And a quick shot by Bulldog. Polk brings it down. Wakefield has been held in check. And look at that. The big three from Ebony Parker, who just checked into the game. And Tulsa has their first lead of the afternoon. Well, I like me some Ebony Parker. That girl can shoot the ball. She's one of the NJCAA three-point shooting specialists. She scored more threes in, in this past um, 
year from the NJCAA from three-point range. So she's special. She just sometimes lacks a little confidence, but that was a great stroke. Fitzgerald answers, though, at the other end and is in double figures now for the 15th time in 16 games for Temple. Our first tie of the game. It's a great comeback so far by Tulsa. Nice move by Polk off the glass. Crystal Polk averaging four points a game, has six for the sophomore out of Lawton Eisenhower. And then Butts comes to work. Well, Butts got caught it in rhythm and shot it, and that, that was what's different from the first couple shots that she had. Down to the final seconds here of the first half. Spurl is blocked. Here comes Temple. Nice zero move by Fitzgerald. Draws the fall foul on Wakefield. That is her first. Just the second team foul on Tulsa here in the second quarter. And so Fitzgerald goes to the line. Something she does quite a bit going to the free throw line. Leads them this season 77 out of 90 for 86% for this senior out of Norfolk, Virginia. She leads them in a lot of categories, obviously scoring, as we've mentioned, 19 points a game, free throw shooting at 86%, assists at 7.5, three-point shooting at 35%, minutes played, assist to turnover ratio, one of the best in the country, 2.8 assists for every turnover. Impressive. And she gives Temple the three-point advantage. As we close out the first half from the Reynolds Center, See what Tulsa does here in the final 10 seconds. Dixon with it and draws the foul. According to Barbara Jo Smith, our officials today, and I'm hesitant in identifying them, Barbara Jo Smith, the left of your screen, bottom of your screen is Tom Danaher, and handing the ball off underneath the basket is Carla Fountain. Five seconds. Wakefield trying to create her own shot. Does it with the left hand. Nice try with the offhand and couldn't get it to go. So an entertaining first half for Temple and Tulsa. An American Athletic Conference action as Temple trying to stay with Connecticut atop the American Athletic Conference standings. And, of course, again, Connecticut at 3-0 on the year, as is Temple in conference standings. And we go courtside to Angela Beck. Coach, you took a 10-2 lead, and then they, they got back in it. What happened? Um, they start getting inside of us, um, you know, getting easy buckets, offensive rebounds. And then we can't really find uh, bottom of the net. Um, we got to try to find a way to get second chance opportunities. They've been doing a good job of blocking you off the boards. What's happening there? Yeah, we just have to work a little harder to try to get better position. Are you going to do anything different defensively? Um, we'll see. Good luck, Coach. Thank you. Thank you, Angela. Appreciate it. And again, our score here at intermission is Temple 30, Tulsa 27. We'll continue with our coverage in a moment. This is American Athletic Women's Basketball on the American Digital Network. We are American. We are the spark that ignites, dazzling, brilliant, intense. We are plugged in with the volume turned up all the way. Because on this court, on any given night, the energy of five becomes the power of one. That's power. We are power. Out here from the American Digital Network studio. Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of The Rise. Basketball is heating up across the conference, so let's get you caught up on the top headlines from around the league. 
The top four teams in the American standings entering the week will meet as 22nd ranked Cincinnati welcomes SMU to 5th Third Arena on Thursday, while Saturday features the two teams currently tied for third, Houston and UCS. Taking a quick look back to last week, the Memphis Tigers went 2-0 in conference play, in large part due to the American Player of the Week, Markel Crawford. In Memphis' victory over UConn, the junior posted 19 points to go along with a season-high eight rebounds. He then wrapped up his week, knocking down a career-best five three-pointers en route to 24 points in the Tigers' 21-point win at Tulane. In his last three games, Crawford has now scored 71 points. Memphis currently sits in fifth place in the American standing. Rookie of the Week honors went to Temple's Quinton Rose. This is the third Rookie of the Week honor for the freshman. Rose posted 14 points in both of Temple's games last week. On Saturday, Rose was one of five owls in double figures as Temple notched its first win in American play. Through four games, Rose leads the American in steals, averaging three per game. Outside of Thursday's marquee matchup between SMU and Cincinnati, there's a couple of other interesting games to keep an eye on in weeknight action. Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern, Tulsa hosts Memphis as the Tigers are winners of three straight games and four of their last five. The Hurricane will also have to deal with Diedrich Lawson, who has recorded 13 double-doubles this season. Also on Wednesday, Temple heads to UConn for a 9 p.m. Eastern tip on CBS Sports Network. Both teams come in after snapping early skids to start American play. UConn's defense played its best game of the season in its win over UCF while the Temple offense got on track in its 81-62 win over ECU. On the women's side, UConn and USF are ranked in the latest AP poll. The Huskies, who moved to 2-0 in conference play with a win over East Carolina last Wednesday, are two games away from breaking their NCAA record 90-game winning streak set from 2008 to 2010, and they'll have an opportunity to set a new record this Saturday at SMU. Sophomore forward Nafisa Collier paced the Huskies in its win over the Pirates with 21 points on 8 of 11 shooting. The 21-point performance is her ninth 20-plus point game of the season and the sixth in UConn's last eight contests. Kitty Aloxa earned American Player of the Week honors after scoring a conference-high 37 points in Saturday's win over Tulsa. Loxa was one of four bowls in double-figure scoring last Wednesday in the win at Tulane, which snapped the Green Wave's 11-game home winning streak dating back to last season. SMU returns to the friendly confines of Moody Coliseum this week, hosting Tulane on Wednesday before taking on the Huskies in a Saturday matinee. The Mustangs are 7-0 at home this season and went undefeated in non-conference games at Moody Coliseum for the first time since the 2004-2005 campaign. They are led by double-double machine Alicia Frawling, who ranks fourth in the nation in that category and leads the American in rebounding. Fun fact, the American has won 69% of its non-conference games this season, which is the best showing since the league was formed in 2013. And Temple added on to that total after opening the week with a win at Kennesaw State. The Owls finished the week with a victory over Tulane, and the win was even sweeter as junior guard Tania Atkinson scored her 1,000th career point. Don't forget you can catch three games on the American Digital Network this week. Wednesday night features East Carolina at Temple at 7 p.m. Eastern, while Saturday both teams will tip off again on the ADN as Tulsa hosts Temple and East Carolina heads to USF. And over to men's soccer where the 2017 MLS Player Combine gets underway this week and six players from the American will put their best foot forward in front of 20 MLS clubs in Los Angeles. All invited players are eligible for selection in the 2016 Super Draft presented by Adidas, which takes place this Friday, January 13th at the LA Convention Center. Good luck to all of these guys this week. Tennis opens its spring season this week. The USF men's team enters the season ranked 25th nationally with SMU, Tulsa, and Tulane all receiving votes. A handful of American players are ranked to start the season, including Ryan Penniston of Memphis and Oram Harrell from Tulsa, who are ranked among the top 50 in singles players. On the women's side, Sarah Sarju of East Carolina and Anki Wynn from Memphis enter the season ranked in singles. Coming up, we get to know the two senior leaders of the SMU men's basketball program. They are looking to go out on a high note this season after missing out on the NCAAs last year. Sterling Brown and Ben Moore are on a mission. We'll tell you more about it up next. We are American. We operate from a place of power, a place where what goes up 
doesn't necessarily come down where the laws of physics are thrown out the window and high off the glass. It's power that moves us forward by leaps and bounds. The kind of power that brings the house down so the house can rise up. That's power. We are power. While they grew up only 22 miles apart in Illinois and never played against each other in high school, they came together at the right time in the summer of 2013. SMU men's basketball seniors Ben Moore and Sterling Brown traveled to SMU with their sights set high, and together they are just two wins away from becoming the winningest four-year class in SMU history. Uh, we have a great relationship. You know, he's been my roommate since freshman year, and you know what he brings to the table is unmatched. You know. The stats, you can look at his stats and you know he's bringing a lot with the stats, but what he's not doing on the stat sheet is important too. So he's just a great player. I mean, we got a good relationship. You know, uh, he's been my roommate, you know, since day one. Um, but he's a real fiery person. You know, we want to get after it on the court you know, just like I do. So you know, that, that's good. Well, it's Tim Jankovic's first year calling the shots at SMU. He has been a key to Ben and Sterling's development throughout their careers as the associate head coach. Now as seniors, Jankovic has challenged his veteran leaders to not only make the most of this year's team, but to get the most out of the teammates around them. Oh, I mean, I've just learned a lot from the people around SMU. You know, they're older, they know what they're doing. You know, they have a lot of knowledge that they've been conveying to me, so they've been very helpful. Building that bond with my teammates and the coaches, um, and as a player, just really you know, developing my game each year, different aspects, uh, whatever I can do to help, win, help the team win, you know, really. Well, my expectations are very high. Ours are very high. Everyone in our program, um, you know, we don't want to put a low ceiling on it. And we are fortunate. I think the, one of the first places you should always look with your team is the quality of the leadership and the talent of your senior class. And these guys, Ben and Sterling, have won an awful lot of games at SMU. Uh, I haven't done the math, but maybe they could go down as the winningest, arguably, I would, I would think. Um, I, I believe in them, I trust them, I, I know their heart, I know their talent, and uh, I also know their hunger given uh, the fact that, you know, for no fault of theirs that we were, we were not allowed to play postseason. So uh, they, will, they will, it is their team, we tell them that all the time, it's, uh, I'm the coach, but it's their team. And whatever they want to get out of it, they need to really be helping to facilitate and I, I believe in them. I think they'll do a great job. Ben Moore just joined the 1,000-point club in SMU's win over Temple. And Sterling Brown is just over 150 points away from joining his teammate. But the goals for this season are much greater. In fact, the sky is the limit. Um, I feel like now that we got the opportunity to get back in the tournament, you know, I feel like uh, we need to take that you know, to its full advantage. You know, um, Last year, we didn't. We didn't have the opportunity, but this year we do. So go out there and just be the best team, you know, the, the hardest working team, the most aggressive team, and everything will take care of itself from there. I know it's crazy, but I don't think you should go into a season without a goal of winning a national championship. The only way you don't have a chance is if you're banned from postseason, and we're not. We're, we're, we're eligible for postseason, and uh, I think you have to think big. I think you have to think for the top. Um, but always my goal, too, is to be the very best team, to really be working hard on a daily basis, a weekly basis, um, to find out that at the end of a period, when, when the final buzzer goes off, have we become the best team that we could become? And whether that is a national championship or whether it was, a, you know, in some people's eyes, not an amazing season, I think you've got to feel good about yourself if you spent everything you had and you put everything into a season. And SMU will look to do just that and give it all they have as they hit the road for a tough test Thursday night in Fifth Third Arena, taking on 22nd-ranked Cincinnati. The Mustangs are currently receiving votes in the national polls and will look to close out the remaining portion of the season strong with their hearts set on a trip to the NCAAs after missing out last season. That's all we have for you today on The Rise. Make sure to check back throughout the week for highlights, features, and updates on your favorite team. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great week, everybody.
The American Athletic Conference Championship is right around the corner, taking place March 9th through the 12th at the Excel Center in Hartford, Connecticut, as all 11 American teams will compete for the automatic bid to the NCAA tournament. Tickets are priced as low as $199. Get yours today online by visiting www.excelcenter.com in person at the Excel Center box office or by telephone at 877-522-8499. We look forward to seeing you in March. We are American. The Conference of Opportunity. The opportunity to chase dreams. The opportunity to make your mark and change the game. Because that's power. We are power. The 2017 American Athletic Conference Women's Basketball Championship tickets are now on sale for March 3rd through the 7th at Mohegan Sun Arena. Get your tickets today to watch all 11 teams in action fighting for an automatic berth to the NCAA tournament. Tickets start as low as $99 and can be purchased online at mohegansun.com, on Ticketmaster, or by calling 1-800-743-3000. Let the games begin. We'll see you in March. of Tulsa, a top 50 private institution. Welcome back to the Reynolds Center here in the University of Tulsa campus. Don King with you as we take a look at the uh, stats here in just a moment. Field goal percentage right now. How about that for Tulsa? 53% in the second quarter and so that puts them at 37 percent for the game 40 percent for the game for the owls rebounding is something that you would have thought the owls would dominate but yet they haven't and then three-point shooting tulsa averaging six seven six and a half three-pointers made per game only one and yet you see the assists pretty even and the steals as well tulsa also has done a nice job on the offensive rebounds, getting five offensive rebounds, outscoring Temple in the paint 16 to 12. And one of the other numbers that Angela will talk about in a little bit are personal fouls. Tulsa has only three personal fouls in the first half, and that's been one of their problems this year is sending the other team to the free throw line much more than the opportunities they get. And Temple has done a nice job this year of doing just that, getting to the line more than their opponents. And yet in the first half, Temple 4 of 4 from the line, Tulsa 4 of 7. Leading scores for Temple, 12 points for Fionda Fitzgerald, as you would expect. Onasia Fountain with 7. And for Tulsa off the bench, Shug Dixon with 8. And Crystal Polk inside with 6. Meaning Tulsa's outscored the Temple bench 17 to 4 in the first half. One score, one tie, two lead changes. Coach, they went we on a, a 10 to 2 run. What did you say to your team? Well, that first quarter got, got away from us because we didn't make shots. I mean, again, you got to make shots. I felt better about the second quarter, felt better about uh, us getting the ball inside, so we got to continue to attack their post players. Any, anything you said at halftime? Oh, just to continue to attack their post players, and defensively, we got to have better help side. Good luck, Coach. All right, thank you. Again, two lead changes, one tie in that first half. The biggest lead of the game was nine points by Temple. At 14-5 before Tulsa closed it to five going into the second quarter. Took the lead at 25-23. And then Temple came back. Here we go with Fitzgerald. Can't get it to go. And Wakefield brings it up for TU. 
Couple of TUs here, Temple and Tulsa. And Spurl, 17-footer into the hands of Fitzgerald. How about Tulsa only getting three fouls in that first half? Three fouls, three fouls and uh, 16 points in the paint uh, probably will dictate really what their comeback was all about. Mm -hmm. Pounding it inside and, and limiting their foul. So, yes, that was one of the things they were worried about, and they did a great job, and I think their rebounding was outstanding, too. Just the way they kept Temple from getting those offensive boards. They're averaging, what, 16 a game, right. and they didn't get it. Wakefield with an errant pass inside to Elliott, and so another Tulsa turnover. They're seventh of the game. Temple has five. Swinging around the butts, who has five points all in the second quarter. And then Fitzgerald backs out. Six to shoot. Wow, that was a tough shot. She's capable of stroking that, and she likes to take tough shots. I'm surprised, though, they don't attack the Fountain uh, Hughes mismatch right. that they have because they need to get it in there low to her. She was wide open, and they didn't. she didn't touch it. Tulsa somehow gets possession of the basketball back. It must have glanced off the fountain. Galden was pretty quiet in that first half. Mm -hmm. You can credit Fitzgerald for her outstanding defense on her. Expect her to probably take a few more shots here because they're really used to her being a more proficient for them. Five to shoot for Wakefield. Nice duck under. Blew it with the left hand. Spurrow can't control it. And it volleys around to Butts. And one. So Fountain goes to the line. Here's that transition basket. Little jump pass inside, good finish, and a little foul there by Wakefield. Not really necessary at that time. It all started from their defense, though. Popping it away on this side and, and then converting it. And a team as dangerous as this Temple team is, they can explode on you in a hurry. Yeah, I haven't really been too happy in the first two minutes of Tulsa's shot selection. Right. They've come out and taken a couple outside shots and not really done what they did to get themselves in the position to tie it up. So they, they really don't dig a hole right now. Get get some quality shots, attack the basket, and, and take care of the basketball. That's a that's a bad turnover right there. Butts misses the layup. Golden was dogging her from behind. That would have given them their biggest lead of the game. Golden's been pretty silent. Sherelle cleans it up for Temple. Well, Spurl's making them work to get those rebounds, so credit Spurl for her just her aggressiveness and her work ethic. And to Martin, and now Fountain. And boy, they must have heard you, Angela. They're going inside now. Well, they, they can't guard them with the, the guard lineup that they have. They have too many, they have three small guards in, and, and they, they can't match up, so they've got to take advantage of that mismatch. So the biggest lead of the game at 10. Hughes in trouble. Nice job of working it around. And Perez for the rainbow. Nice rebound by Elliott. Or rather Spurl. Spurl's working hard oh, for her is. team. Ah, Elliott had a good look and dribbled it off her foot. That's a bit of a freshman error by Elliott, just trying to move before she actually gets possession. You catch, you chin it, and then you make your move, and she's moving while she's trying to try to catch it. She's a freshman. Golden is a freshman on this Tulsa start in this Tulsa starting lineup. Good crossover by Fitzgerald sets up butts. Golden rebounds for Tulsa. Down 10.
Elliott tries her luck from outside. Tulsa has made only one three-pointer in this game, averaging six and a half a contest. Well, I think credit Temple's guard play. They're very, very tough at the guard position, and they're not allowing their guards to set up. And what they're doing is attacking their post play, which, you know, they, she's not really going with her big posts. And so they're able to, you know, they're more physical. Tulsa's a little more physical inside, and I think they need to go back to that, just keep pounding it inside and seeing what happens because they've been fouling them or, or giving them the, the basket. I'd like to see Polk come in the game too. Yes. Crystal Polk, a big first half. Six points. Shook Dixon with eight points off the bench. A drive by Dixon. Cut off. Here come the Owls again. Up ten. Approaching the midway mark of the third period from the Reynolds Center in Tulsa. Don King along with Angela Beck. You can follow us on Twitter at American underscore WBB. Boy, Spurl is really playing hard and draws the foul. Spurl's undersized, but she's she makes up for it with her effort. And there's a lot of undersized posts that are, are good. And I really think that she's come onto her own here late. Tough day shooting for Temple, even though they lead by 10 at the midway mark of this third period. Shooting 40%. Foul on the Owls. I think they'll get... They'll get the foul on Sophia Martin, and we have a break in the action here with 4.59 remaining, third period. We are American. We are the spark that ignites, dazzling, brilliant, intense. We are plugged in with the volume turned up all the way. Because on this court, on any given night, the energy of five becomes the power of one. That's power. We are power. The American Athletic Conference Championship is right around the corner, taking place March 9th through the 12th at the Excel Center in Hartford, Connecticut, as all 11 American teams will compete for the automatic bid to the NCAA Tournament. Tickets are priced as low as $199. Get yours today online by visiting www.excelcenter.com in person at the Excel Center box office or by telephone at 877-522-8499. We look forward to seeing you in March. We are American. The Conference of Opportunity. The opportunity to chase dreams. The opportunity to make your mark and change the game. Because that's power. We are power. The 2017 American Athletic Conference Women's Basketball Championship tickets are now on sale for March 3rd through the 7th at Mohegan Sun Arena. Get your tickets today to watch all 11 teams in action fighting for an automatic berth to the NCAA Tournament. Tickets start as low as $99 and can be purchased online at mohegansun.com, on Ticketmaster, or by calling 1-800-743-3000. Let the games begin. We'll see you in March. Temple leading Tulsa by a score of 37 to 27 here at the Reynolds Center in Tulsa. Don King again along with Angela Beck. Aaliyah Butts trying to get it done for Temple. Well, she's taking some difficult shots, but that's what she likes. That, that time she stopped and uh, passed it down underneath for a quick two. And then Fountain's just a workhorse. She's capable of a double-double any night. And there she is for two of her points. Fountain also plays the piano, so she's making music <laughs> with the piano and on the floor here. Also four steals for number 32 for Temple. Tulsa has to get something going offensively here in the third period. 
to get untracked. And there you go. Well, they say if you reach, I teach. And that time, Temple reached, and she t she taught him. She went right to the hole and scored on her man. First points of the third quarter. Belonging to Shug Dixon, who leads Tulsa with 10 points. Fitzgerald is smooth. Mm -hmm. she, she's explosive. There's a little change of pace. You know, there's X amount of gears a player has. She has that fifth gear where a lot of players don't have that. She can just take it on a dime and uh, take you to the hole. Reach in foul on Spurl. Her second personal foul. Well, Connecticut trying to take care of business, leading SMU at halftime, trying to win their 91st consecutive win, which breaks their record previously of 90 straight. And another foul on Tulsa. That'll be their fifth team foul. The Temple just seems to be going inside a lot more. I like the quality of shots that Temple's taking here late in the quarter. They're getting it inside off dribble drive, off posts up. They're getting to the line. They're playing Temple basketball. And that's what they need to do to win on the road in the American. Atkinson at the line, the honor roll student missed her first one. And knocks that one in for a third point of the game. But get back to Connecticut. They disposed of USF the other day, 102 to 37. And USF was nationally ranked and this, some feel maybe the second best team or Temple the second best team in the league. Is that, I mean, that's a, a cursing and a, bl a blessing, right? At the same time for, for this conference and for maybe Connecticut for that matter. I think it, it's tough. Anytime the number two team in your league gets beat by 66 points by the number one team and they're both nationally ranked, it just it just kills it. I mean, 66 points is like, I mean, USF is a better team than that, right. but Connecticut just came on all cylinders. What can you tell him to do? Do you, do you not play your players? Do you? I don't know. I, I think our league is better than that, and I, I hate seeing that type of score, but we have Connecticut in it. If anyone else had Connecticut in their league, they, they would probably have right. the same thing happening. Right. Tulsa with only two points in the quarter, and now Matilda Mossman is really working the officials the last two times down. She has not liked the calls against her team. We talked earlier today that she only has had one technical the whole time she's been at Tulsa. But it looks like she's working on her second, and I told her I could coach her up on how to get a few more technicals because I, I was good at that at Nebraska. I, I, I probably, I didn't know if I led the league, but I was, I, I always felt like I should lead everything. I was just that competitive. Right. <laughs> Tulsa with only two points here in the quarter. Dixon has those two and leads Tulsa with 10. Nothing inside, so she feeds Perez. Perez, a great outside shooter and averaging seven points a game, but there have been some games she just has not been able to get on track. Oh, and an offensive foul called on Elliott. Yeah, illegal screen. One of the reasons Perez hasn't been able to get on track is she's a standstill three shooter. True. She doesn't take you off the dribble, so what they know is that if they crowd you, she's not going to drive on you. And she, she can drive, but she just chooses not to. And she's one of those kids that have stood around and shot her whole life. Mm -hmm. And so it's the, it's the type of player that you're attracted to a little bit. You can teach them how to drive, but it doesn't mean they're going to do it. Right, or they're comfortable with it. The first 10 games of the year, she averaged 10 points a game. But in the last six games, she's only totaled 15 points. Fitzgerald up top. Ah, that was nothing but money right there. Well, she stroked it like that early, but has not stroked it for a while, so that's good to see her take that down. 14 points to lead all scores. 11-point lead. Richards can hit those. Two and a half minutes to go in the third period. Fitzgerald controlling things, now controlling the tempo off to Atkinson and around to Berger. Fountains open, 17-footer straight away. Nope. And Golden picks up another rebound. I think this is one of Temple's best lineups in right now with Fountain, Atkinson, and Sherrill. 
that's a good big lineup athletic lineup and uh, one that she goes to when she really wants to increase the score Ebony Parker back in for Tulsa number 11 and Leah Butts in for Temple there's Fitzgerald just high arcing nice delivery she has she has this she floats kind of in the air a little bit she has she has ups but mm -hmm. but she kind of just hangs there and I really haven't seen too many have players have the grace that she has in her shooting and how she plays you know she doesn't have to play too hard she just kind of orchestrates right. what she does and it's beautiful and and comes across as not and that's really sometimes you'd think players like that don't play hard they do they just make it look so effortless well, she plays hard on defense because she right. always picks the toughest uh, defensive uh, al alignment. Wakefield having a tough day. She's in the lane. She needs to do something. And again, tried it with the offhand. Couldn't do it. Cleared by Sherrell. And Butts wants to push it up. Poke into the game for Tulsa. Wakefield with two points in this game. Butts had a couple ideas about what she wanted to do, and she just couldn't figure it out. Good steal by Fountain. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm not that excited about the finger roll at the front of the rim in a situation like that. You're trying to win on the road. Just bank it off the glass and get the, get the you know, two. But she, she finger rolled it and made it. Good for her. We mentioned Wakefield. Only two points. That was in the first quarter. So there's a basket four as Connecticut has outscored Tulsa here in the third period by a score of 12 to 4. I'd like to see Tulsa get a little more movement from their players. Mm -hmm. they're, they're kind of standing around, and so they're easier to guard. I would be rubbing Wakefield a little bit more off some screens to get her some, some shots. Nice setup there to get into the paint by Dixon, and then she drew the foul. Alexis Golden back into the game, and Dixon takes a seat. And meanwhile, for Temple, number 34, Mo Boldick into the game. She's out of Clintondale, New York. Into Golden. And Richards can't buy another straightaway 12-footer. Here comes Temple. Temple usually goes about seven deep, and today they've gone nine deep. Haven't played their eight, eighth and ninth player that much, but... Polk clears it after the Fitzgerald miss. Fitzgerald's done a nice job on Wakefield this afternoon. That was a nice take by her, but it was the first take of the whole series, and you haven't shifted the defense, so they're not going to get the rebound. So probably I'd like to see them work it just a little bit more before they take that shot. Foul on uh, Temple. That's just their third team foul here with 25 seconds left, so obviously they have a foul to give. Nice cut to the basket. Nice right. staggered screen there that they came off to rub, rub two players off different different staggers and got her open on the second cut. See if Tulsa can hold Temple off here at the end of the third. That will not count. So the third period has come to a close, and it was uh, pretty much all Temple till the end of the third period. They lead by 9, 42 to 33 as we head to the fourth quarter on the American Digital Network. What makes a temple owl? Meet Stella. She's wise, fierce, and she's not alone. Temple University, where owls call home. We are the cherry and white. The city is our classroom, and we lead the rush hour, making our mark on every field around the world. A world without temple, well, that's like the sky without the North Star. Temple, never stopping. We are American. We are the spark that ignites, dazzling, brilliant, intense. We are plugged in with the volume turned up all the way. 
Because on this court, on any given night, the energy of five becomes the power of one. That's power. We are power. We are America. The conference of opportunity. The opportunity to chase dreams. The opportunity to make your mark and change the game. Because that's power. We are power. of Tulsa, a top 50 private institution. Here is some upcoming broadcast on the American Digital Network for the American Athletic Conference and women's basketball. There you see Tuesday, SMU at Cincinnati. That should be a good one. Wednesday as well, UCF at East Carolina. Next Saturday, East Carolina travels to Cincinnati. And then a Texas battle also on the 21st, SMU at Houston. When you look at the uh, numbers coming into the fourth quarter, Coach, what surprises you? Well, the three-point shooting, first of all, is still not very good. One for nine right now for Tulsa and two for 13. So we'll see how that happens in the fourth quarter. But Tulsa's out rebounding Temple 31 to 29 and has one more offensive rebound, which totally shocks me. Yeah. But they're turning the ball over double to Temple. So they really have to protect the basketball and not turn it over in this fourth quarter. 14 to 7 on the turnover ratio. So here comes Temple pulling away to a nine point lead to start the fourth after being up by as many as 13 in the third period. And Fionda Fitzgerald leads all scores with 14. Outside shot by Tanea Atkinson, no good. And here comes Wakefield in transition for Tulsa. That was one of your keys, was stopping Temple in transition for Tulsa. Yes, and the rebounding is just, they're one and done. Tulsa's not giving them a second shot, which is a big reason why they're in this game. Good pass into Polk, although she wasn't positioned well to the basket. She gets bailed out on the block, and so Tulsa will still have it with five seconds to shoot. I haven't really talked about the officiating this year, but we really do have great officiating mm -hmm. in the American. The fouls today have been very minimal. There haven't been any bad calls that I've seen. Of course, I'm not a coach anymore, but, you know, it's it's just been a well-called basketball game. They're really allowing the players to play and the flow of the game to happen. Would agree. Temple with a miss and Richards with a walk. Richards is not having one of her better games. No. I've seen her play better. She's a little bit off kilter, just making some mistakes that really they can't afford to have happen here. Again, this is a Temple team that has four players that average in double figures. Fitzgerald, who brings it up, is one of them. Fountain is another. And then you look at Atkinson, averaging 14, has been held to three. And Butts, who averages 16, has been held to seven. Well, they talk about Parker's defense not being all that great, but she's actually matched up to Fitzgerald, and I like it because she has more speed to, to actually catch her off that dribble drive but that time she got fouled by the interior. Crystal Polk commits her second personal. That'll send Fitzgerald to the line for two. Fionda is the all-time assist leader at Temple as Matilda Mossman looks on. Out of Norfolk, Virginia. Goes to the line a lot. Two of three from the stripe today. And got that one. This is the fourth meeting between the two schools. The last time, the only time Temple's been to Tulsa. They lost two seasons ago by nine. Temple beat Tulsa 
Last year, the last time they played was in the conference postseason tournament. Temple's just not had a great shooting night for Temple. No, they haven't. You can say neither teams have shot extremely well, but Tulsa did have that second quarter where they shot 53% and they went inside. So I really haven't seen them focus on that inside game that they had on, in that second quarter. How has Temple done? Tulsa's one of nine, so they've had some three-point opportunities, haven't hit many. But Temple seems to have done a pretty good job of defending the three, or at least not extending their defense out, which was one of your keys. They obviously knew that that's what they wanted to do, so they took that part away from them. Now they're forcing these guys that don't really like to dribble drive to dribble drive and then forcing them to, to establish this post game, which they've been hounding most of the night. Travel called on Parker. That's the not necessary turnover that they can't afford. Right. And, and, you know, Parker's a junior. I know, I, I know that. You know, she's transferred in, but you, you know, she, you can't, you can't do that if you're an upperclassman in the fourth quarter. Junior college transfer from Blinn College out of Texas just celebrated her 21st birthday last week. Temple by 10 and a low-scoring game from Tulsa. Nice drive by Aaliyah Butts. I like that drive. I like Aaliyah Butts when she does more driving. She doesn't drive enough, really, for me. She's such an elusive driver, mm -hmm. and she really can, what I say, put you in jail where she takes that underhand layup, and, and you can't block it. Right. She gets it right underneath. She was the only unanimous selection by the coaches in the preseason all-conference team, and here she crashes into Spurl and draws the foul. I think she got bailed out by that. Here she goes. Spurl just didn't get her feet yet. She put need her on that. And uh, actually, we're lucky nobody got hurt on that. Yeah. Good call by the officials. I love saying that. I, just I was getting ready to say. I couldn't you're... say that as a coach. <laughs> I just never felt like they were good. You you're know, not for a my coach team. anymore, yeah, so you can. I really love the officials now. <laughs> <laughs> well, they work hard. You know, they're in and out of every arena. They're they're on the road so much during the season, like like we are. But even more, the really good officials are traveling you know, almost, most of the week. Aaliyah Butts cashes in on both free throws. So she has 11 points. So she now in double figures. Well, she can come out. You don't think she's going to have a good night, and then she'll put up double digits right. every night. Should Dixon, though, is showing us something, isn't she, off the bench with a team-high 12 points? Yes, it, that's a great drive by her, and she's got a great future here at Tulsa. One of the freshmen. Fountain lights it up from outside. Well, Fountain's a player. She likes to take the tough shots, too. So they've got some really good uh, quality players there. Biggest lead, 50 to 35. And again, Dixon, this time with the offhand. Impressive. That's a drive by an upperclassman if I ever saw one. Really breaking her down with her dribble. Little spin and then using the body to protect that left-hand scoop shot. Very nice. And the freshman has a new career high, 15 points. And a steal by Wakefield. That's her spot right there. Don't get sloppy on this Tulsa team. Look at that. Wakefield almost swiped another one. Coach is up. Not happy right now on the Temple bench. Coach Cardoza says, slow it down. Drive by Berger. And a foul on Addison Richards of Tulsa. And we haven't seen much of Berger today. No. Nope. But she's one of the best three-point shooters on the team. Actually ranks 14th in the American Athletic Conference in three-point shooting, but that one she took it off the drive. She's out of uh, Hampton, Virginia. Berger, we're speaking of, number 21. This goes inside the fountain. She can't get it to drop. And Dixon comes away with a rebound. And look at the way she comes up the floor. You can just tell her confidence is good right now, and she's in a good spot. 
Had a good look. When the freshman's clapping for the ball, you, you know <laughs> you got some confidence. She's like, give it to me. I like how Fitzgerald's pulling it back, setting it up. She knows time to score. That's, that's the qualities of a good leader. Fitzgerald draws the foul. We mentioned Berger, number 21, from Hampton, Virginia. They lost to Hampton earlier in the year. So we take a look at Fitzgerald here. Once again, using the body. But Temple has not been, as you mentioned earlier in the, in the telecast, they've won 20-plus games the last two seasons, been unable to get to the national, the NCAA tournament, have done well in the women's NIT. But sometimes, and they have some nice wins on their resume, but yet they have a bad loss to Hampton. Yeah, I think um, they, they had a player out that game. That could have affected it, but that's still not a good excuse. I did talk to Coach about that. They seem to have a bad loss on their schedule the last couple years, and you can't really do that when you're kind of on the bubble to make it in the NCAA. So this year they need to win these type of games on the road, and they need to win them solidly and not have any mental breakdowns. That was a great take by Tulsa. Parker with the three-pointer. Fountain goes to the lines, 51-43. Tulsa hanging in with five minutes, one second to play. Just coming off the pick in rhythm and stroking it. So here's Denisha Fountain at the line. And certainly not to talk any will, ill will for Temple. As you mentioned, they've, they've, they've stumbled, stubbed their toe against Hampton and they have beaten Florida and uh, some others that were nationally ranked but you look at this conference and they have been, the conference has been extremely successful against other conferences this season 6 and 1 against the ACC 6 and 0 oh against the A10 5 and 1 against the Big East 6 and 1 against the Big 10 i mean that shows you that this is a strong conference and it's hard to win where it's hard uh, for these teams to go on the road and win on the other team's floors. Temple, Temple's capable of, of winning, and actually, you know, I think they should be getting more votes mm -hmm. for the top 20. I, they're one of our best teams in our league, and uh, I think if they can just be consistent, you know, do the little things right and, and really learn how to close out all these games on the road, um, they'll, they'll have their chance. Their goal is obviously to go to the NCAAs. They're still mad about the fact that they didn't. There's Fitzgerald again, finishing at the rim. But, you know, just like Fitzgerald, it's her senior year. She knows what it's going to take. They're not going to be happy with any NWIT. Right. This year it's going to be NCAA or bust. That basket by Fitzgerald moves her into fifth place on the all-time Temple scoring list. And she'll come back and shoot a free throw when we continue on the American Digital Network. What makes a temple owl? Meet Stella. She's wise, fierce, and she's not alone. Temple University, where owls call home. We are the cherry and white. The city is our classroom, and we lead the rush hour, making our mark on every field around the world. A world without temple, well, that's like the sky without the North Star. Temple, never stopping. We are American. The conference of opportunity. The opportunity to chase dreams. The opportunity to make your mark and change the game. Because that's power. We are power. a top 50 private institution. We are American. We are the spark that ignites, dazzling, brilliant, 
intense. We are plugged in with the volume turned up all the way. Because on this court, on any given night, the energy of five becomes the power of one. That's power. We are power. Taking a look at the American Athletic Conference honor roll for women's basketball. Temple's Tanea Atkinson, an honor roll student. And Bray McDonald from ECU. Congratulations to both of them. From the American Digital Network. Temple has taken two more shots, made two more baskets. But one of the reasons they lead by 12 now into this fourth quarter is they're pounding the ball inside as you expected them to do at the get-go. And they've now outscored Tulsa by seven at the free throw line. Yeah, one of the reasons Tanea Atkinson made that honor roll was her 19 points and 10 rebound production that she had in the two wins that they had mm -hmm. last week. She's not having that quality of game today, but she's still doing some things that are going unnoticed. Atkinson had a big uh, game against St. Joe's back in November. Career high 24 points for a season high 24. As Fitzgerald completes the three point play to match her season average with 19 points. T Temple gives the coach the luxury of having Fitzgerald, Butts, and Fountain all 80 plus free throw shooters yeah. down the stretch. Dixon fouled going to the cup. She'll shoot two. Dixon is, is really playing great. Here she takes it down and splits the defender and draws the foul. 401 remaining. She's pretty good at the line. 19 out of 25 on the year. And my math says that's 76%. And again, she's good at the line. Has made 11 of her last 12 of the season. And now has added to her career high 17 points as Alexis Golden comes in for Richards. Tulsa feeling they are going to have to hit some three-pointers here to win this game if they are to win the game in the final four minutes. I like them extending the defense and forcing them to, to get the ball up the court and mixing it up a little bit. They're going to have to gamble. They can't just, you know, stay steady. They need to look for some traps. They know what their, their main scores are. Not make it easy for them. There you go. Galden in trouble and a behind-the-back pass costs her. Atkinson hangs on to it, knows what to do. Get it to number two. Yeah, th just an unfortunate error by the freshman. They've had three or four defenders. Now they have Wakefield on um, Fitzgerald. Elliott had it, couldn't claim it. And a fresh 30-second clock for the Owls. They're trying to win their ninth in a row. They should be using all the clock that they can. They shot with 19 seconds left. Yeah. They did get the rebound, but that's not really a good possession there when you're trying to win on the road. And you see Coach telling him to hold it up a bit. Fitzgerald in trouble. Nice job of saving it. I mean, they're not putting pressure on the ball. Mm -hmm. Just dribble the ball up top and hold it till you get to 10 seconds and then break them down. That's outside, drains it. Well, that's the that's the knife in the coffin there. <laughs> I mean, right there when you drain the three with 231 to go, that's really tough to take. Butts with a dozen, or 13. And Golden traveled with it. Here's a look at Aaliyah Butts out of Edgewater Park, New Jersey. Well, this is Butts again taking the tough shot. She's like, I want to take the shot. I want to, I want to, you know, win the game and put it, put it out of reach. And she does. She pulls the trigger. Golden on the other end, another unfortunate mm -hmm. turnover. They're almost to 20 turnovers. Wow. That makes 18 turnovers for the game. And that's just, you know, a few too many. Some of that on their own. Some of that because of the Temple defense. We approach two minutes left. For the Owls, short off the glass. Elliott had it, lost it, and a jump ball, and we'll go the other way. 
Interesting when you talk uh, Temple basketball, and certainly they'd like nothing more than to knock off Connecticut or to win a conference championship in the days ahead or the years ahead, and yet they play in the Big Five in Philadelphia, and that is extremely important to this school. And a nice shot by Dixon again, and a timeout call. Yeah, Dixon just stop and pop. Good delivery. She just has a, a good even keel to her game. Yeah, what the, the Tulsa big, crowd. The, the, big, go ahead. the big five, yeah. I think yeah. that you were talking about that, and, and, and she was like, when they beat Villanova by, what, 20-plus points, mm -hmm. that really inspired their team, and that helped – you know, because they've never really hardly beat them, and then they, they just crushed them. And they're so, it was the most, the most emotional that their, their kids had been. And, and then they go to DePaul and, and win DePaul. Right yeah, after who's that, nationally ranked. National ranked team. Right. Big five. It looks like Temple will go 3-0. and Villanova's in there. St. Joe's, Penn, and LaSalle. As we take a look at your keys to the game, how has that turned out? Well, it looks, it looks pretty good. I mean, they pushed the transition quite a bit here down the stretch, and, the, and, and their defense, their pressure defense, did create the turnovers that they needed. They didn't really pound it in the paint the entire game, but I'm, I'm talking off dribble penetration, right. too. Tulsa's done an outstanding job of protecting the paint tonight. They got back in transition. They did not shoot the three very effectively, but I tell you what they did do is they rebounded really well, and that's almost as important as shooting that three. Especially for a team that was last in the conference in rebounding. Although the, the stats, when you say last in the conference, it's a little bit misleading only because they've only played three conference games to this point as some of the young Tulsa fans are enjoying it. So as the season goes along, it will be a little bit more, I guess, legitimate to talk about who leads what in the conference because, again, they've only played three games in the conference. All When you say conference, you're talking about the entire body of work for the season. But they're looking for their third straight 20-win season, and they're about to complete their ninth consecutive win and to go 13-3 on the year for the Owls and their head coach, Tanya Cord Cardoza, the winningest coach in Temple history, who again was a longtime assistant at Connecticut. Tulsa's not an easy place to come in. I don't care how old they are. I don't care how they shoot the three. You still got to come in and you got to put, stay with your game plan and make it happen. I'm sure Tanya's really happy with this win. If, if it happens, you got a minute 45. Anything can still happen. Right. But if she gets this win, I think she's happy with how her team came out in that third quarter, held them to single digit points. And then in the fourth quarter, they really, I think, orchestrated how she would like them to uh, score, which is taking it patiently and, and getting quality shots. They jumped out to a 10 to 2 lead in this game. Tulsa fought back to trail by five going into the second quarter and then took the lead in the second quarter, the only lead they had in the game before Temple led by three at halftime. And then, as you mentioned, in the third quarter, went to work and got the lead up to 13. Fitzgerald, not enough, and Dixon couldn't save it. Excellent block out. I think if you want to teach a team how to block out, Tulsa's done yeah. just a tremendous job of keeping a body on them so they can't jump over them. They've not all had the height, but they've had the technique, and it's that's been an outstanding effort on Tulsa's part. And I've been impressed with how many times they've been able to get the ball to Elliott on the low block. Now, granted, she has only three points, one of five shooting. She's turned it over four times trying to get better position, but you keep feeding her the ball. I mean, she did well in the last game, 14 points. But you're, you're looking at much tougher competition with this Temple team. One of the better defensive interior teams in the, in the conference. Yeah, Wake, Wakefield, they've done a great job on her, too. And, and you have to say, you know, I said it early on, as she goes, they go. Mm -hmm. They haven't given her much. Right. I mean, that that's, that's actually kind of a foul there. But, you know, they haven't given her much. She's 2 of 11 for the night, and they, they need her to to be in double digits and they only have one double digit scorer and that's Shad Dixon. And she just got another basket with a timeout. Having a 
just split the defender and she nice little touch shot she's got she's shown multiple things in her game she's shown the three she's shown off the dribble um, she's not afraid to attack the glass on uh, I mean it's really what Tulsa needs at this time a player like there in their all like her in their arsenal of their 13 players coach they only have two seniors one of them is Hughes who started but she's been yeah not she only played nine minutes right. tonight and didn't really make a big difference it was it was a tough matchup for her well and because and Dixon certainly kind of filled that role for her or in place of her coach Mossman will host Connecticut here Tuesday night seven o'clock central time Temple winding down the final seconds of this game. I, I think, yeah, he took care of it. And we will have a player of the game here in the in just a minute. And a double dribble called on Fitzgerald. A rare turnover for her. Just her first turnover of the game. As I mentioned, she is extremely Athletic and very good in the assist to turnover ratio. A turnover on Tulsa with 12 seconds left. Fitzgerald only two dishes today. That's kind of unusual. And only eight assists to their 21 baskets for Temple today. But they came on shot well in the fourth quarter. And uh, certainly made a living at the free throw line in this second half. Leading 58-49 in the second half from the foul line. 9 of 12. When at halftime, they only had four free throws. So they will win their ninth and do it on the road in impressive fashion. Well below their 73.5 points per game average. But they knock off Tulsa 58-49 as the Owls now go to 13-3. And keep up with UConn on top of the American Athletic Conference standings at 4-0. Tulsa falls to 5-12, and 1-3, and, and our player of the game is coming up next on the American Digital Network. We are American. We are the spark that ignites, dazzling, brilliant, intense. We are plugged in with the volume turned up all the way. Because on this court, on any given night, the energy of five becomes the power of one. That's power. We are power. What makes a temple owl? Meet Stella. She's wise, fierce, and she's not alone. Temple University, where owls call home. We are the cherry and white. The city is our classroom we lead the rush hour, making our mark on every field around the world. A world without Temple, well, that's like the sky without the North Star. Temple, never stopping. Welcome back to Tulsa's Temple wins at 58 to 49 over Tulsa, and we go over to Angela. Coach, congratulations, an outstanding third quarter performance. You held him to single digits. What did you say to your team at halftime? Um, that we had to do a better job. I felt like for the 20 minutes in the first half, uh, we allowed them to get inside of us and do whatever they wanted to, and we needed to bear down and definitely, um, you know, try to lock them up. It, we were having a difficult time scoring, and sometimes we just got to focus more on the defensive side and make it difficult for the other team as well. Forced them into 19 turnovers while only having eight of your own. Talk about that. Um, you know, I, I thought in the second half our defense was definitely a little bit better. Um, and just sitting down and trying to contain. I mean, they had some guys knock down shots. But for us, we just got to make sure that we're disciplined mentally um, to the point where we're not making shots. We can't focus on that but focus more on the defensive. Congratulations, Coach. Thank you. I'm talking with the player of the game right now, Ms. Fitzgerald. Congratulations. You, you came, came up with your average 19 points. How tough was it out there tonight? Um, 
I mean, every game is tough. I just have to play to the best of my ability and do what I had to do to help my team win. But uh, like Coach said, it was, it was mainly what we were doing on the defensive end. Uh, we wasn't really uh, buckling down against stops. So second half, we had to do a better job of that in order to win the game. So Butts wasn't really coming in early and you didn't really have the players that you're used to leaning on. How did you guys hold it together? Uh, I mean, she's a shooter, so we told her just keep shooting her open shots. They'll they'll uh, fall sooner or later, and we had to find other ways other ways to score, whether it was getting to the basket or you know boxing out, just getting an easy layup. So yeah, you did a great job of dribble penetrating and setting up your scores. They didn't always score it, but beautiful job. I thought you did an outstanding performance. Thank you. I mean, I, I love getting to the basket, so whenever I get get an opportunity, I make sure I do. But other than that, I'll shoot the pull up jump shot. So congratulations. Thank you. All right, thank you, Angela, and thanks to our player of the game, Fionda Fitzgerald, our National Player of the Week, and she showed us why, 19 points uh, today. Also, Denisha Fountain for Temple, 19 points, 5 steals. Ruth Sherrell with 12 rebounds. Shook Dixon led Tulsa with 21 points. For Angela Beck, Don King, thanks for joining us, and goodbye from Tulsa.